Welcome to worship at Old Whalers Church in Sag Harbor and the Community Church of Springs. We're glad that you're here to worship with us on this All Saints Day. Today we remember those people who have gone before us, who have taught us about life, who have taught us about faith, who have shared the good news of Jesus Christ with the world. Let us join together in worship. to worship. We come to worship God who has made us and knows us. We come to celebrate God's presence among us. We come to follow Jesus who leads us to new life. We come with joy knowing in Christ we have eternal life. We come to listen to the Holy Spirit who calls us forth. May we enter this worship knowing the Spirit is alive among us. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this new day, this day when we remember those who have gone before us, those who have loved us unconditionally, those who have taught us how to love you. We give you thanks, O oh God, for this day and for this opportunity to worship together, this opportunity to remember the people in our past, and to remember that we too are called to share our faith with those around us. Be with us, we pray, as we worship together. In Jesus' name, amen.
we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and are strangers to the truth. But if we confess our sin, God, who is just, will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Friends, let us pray together the prayer of confession, continue our prayers in silence, and then hear the assurance of God's forgiveness. Let us pray. Eternal God, in every age you have raised up men and women to live and die in faith. We confess that we are indifferent to your will. You call us to proclaim your name, but we are silent. You call us to do what is just, but we remain idle. You call us to live faithfully, but we are afraid. In your mercy, forgive us. For give us courage to follow in your way, that joined with those from ages past, who have served you with faith, hope, and love, we may inherit the kingdom that you promised in Jesus Christ. Hear now the words of the assurance of forgiveness. Hear the good news. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again so that we might, he might be Lord of both the living and the dead. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of God, we too might walk in newness of life. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Let us give thanks to God for his steadfast love endures forever. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, 
for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is All Saints Day. Today we remember all those who have gone before us, who have loved us unconditionally, who have shown us the faith, who have been with us. But that word saint, we don't use it often, but it evokes for us people who care for lepers, perform miracles, and give witness while they are beheaded or burned at the stake. Because of that, we think of saints as being distant from us, and we look at them reverently from a distance. Our reading from the Gospel of Matthew, however, changes our perspective. It invites us to look at the saints, to really look at them, and as we look at them, to see Jesus, the one who blesses them, who does good for them and then does good through them in the world. In the Beatitudes, we hear Jesus, with a radical word of blessing, make us saints in a different kingdom, breaking forth into the world. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Jesus says, and things change suddenly. Jesus is not in the temple. He's now out in the world. An indiscriminate crowd surrounds him. Some are poor. Others are mourning. Some are struggling for righteousness. Others are fighting for peace. Yet on this day, on this day, the mountain becomes sacred, and these people hear that they are set apart, that they are holy, that they are set apart for God, that they have a mission and that God loves them, that God blesses them. The Beatitudes still sound strange when they are spoken today. They call our attention to people who we would otherwise overlook. Enchanted by the bright, shiny object, we often confuse fame and fortune with blessing. We need God's radical grace to reorient our lives. Those who mourn, who long for the kingdom, those who struggle for peace, those who are persecuted for their faith, these are the ones that God blesses. Not because of anything that they did, but because of what God in Christ does for them. Jesus takes upon himself this world's darkness, its sin and God's wrath, that he might rise as the light of the world, revealing God's grace to all people shining through his saints, shining through those who are poor and mourning and persecuted and hungry. Holy in their helplessness, they are sainted in their suffering. God's people are illumined by Jesus, the light of the world. On All Saints Day, the Beatitudes help us see Christ at work right here among us, right here with us. If we were here in the sanctuary and we looked around, we would see people who would be classified as saints. The young mom with her coloring book, struggling to keep her children quiet, praying that one day her husband will come to worship with her. A widow twisting her wedding ring, thinking of her late husband and wondering when the pain will become bearable. A man struggling with alcohol and depression and wondering whether he belongs here. Nothing would set these people apart in the world. Nothing would make them unique or different. Nothing would make us think that they were blessed. 
But Jesus in grace calls us to see, calls us to look closer, calls us to think about who these people are. And they are a peacemaker, a mourner, the poor in spirit, and all of them are blessed by God. All of us are saints, all of us who believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, all of us who have faith and love God are saints. Do you feel like a saint? I don't feel like a saint. But think about what saints really mean as we look at the Word of God. On All Saints Day, the Beatitudes remind us how God in Christ claims people, frail, humble, poor, mourning, and makes them his own. As you read through the Beatitudes, as you heard the Beatitudes this morning, what parts of your lives are illumined by them? What parts of your life now make sense because you have heard Jesus' word on the mountain to all people? Blessed are you who mourn. Blessed are you who are hungry. Blessed are you peacemakers. Blessed are you. Blessed are you. To today we remember those people who have blessed our lives those people who have gone before us, who have shown us the faith. And I'm sure we all have people that we remember, Sunday school teachers or grandparents or our parents, people that taught us how to live life as God's people. Who are the people in your life? One in particular that stands out in my life is my grandmother. My grandmother was a person that wouldn't stand out particularly, but she had a strong faith. She had a really strong faith and believed in Jesus and lived out her faith every day in her life. Now my grandmother struggled growing, living through the depression, living through tough times in our nation, living through some really difficult personal struggles. She lived a difficult life but all through those difficulties all through the pain that she went through all through the suffering that she had she saw Jesus and she knew that God was with her and would help her through those difficult times and would help her through those difficult days now my grandmother came to live with us when I went to college I didn't know her very well until then. She lived in Florida and we lived in New York and we didn't see each other very often. And because of communication in those days, we didn't even talk to each other very often. But she came to live with us. And when she came to live with us, I learned more about her faith. I saw her Bible. It was earmarked and it was used and it was well-worn. She read that Bible every single day, every single day. And she taught me that faith wasn't just a Sunday kind of thing, but it was an everyday kind of thing. And that even in the struggles of life, God is with us. Who do you have in your life that you would call a saint, that showed you the way to live, that showed you who God is. Today we remember the special people in our lives, in the life of our congregations and in, the in our own lives, the people who have touched us, who have shown us who Jesus is, who have shown us what the love of God is really like. Who are the saints in your life? Today we think about them and give thanks to God for all in them that was good and kind and faithful, to give thanks to God for having them in our lives, to give thanks to God for the way our lives were enriched 
by their presence. It's All Saints Day. Let us give thanks for the saints in our lives. Amen. of God's rule in Christ will feast forever in glory. This is our Lord's table, his dinner party spread across time, and all who trust in Jesus are invited to this foretaste of the age to come. Let us pray. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right to give our thanks and praise to you, the God of Abraham and Sarah, Miriam and Moses, Joshua, Deborah, Ruth, David, priests and prophets, Mary, Joseph, Peter and Paul, apostles and martyrs, and ordinary unknown saints. You are the God of our mothers and fathers and our children to all generations. You, Everlasting One, made us all. You fashion us into one people and continue to love us even when we deny our godly heritage. Still, you call us home to you through saints dedicated to your will. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with all the people of every faith. Of, therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with all the people of faith of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, most gracious God, for the gift of your child, our brother Jesus Christ, who lived in accord with your will to the point of laying down his life for the good news he preached and passed on to us. On the night of his arrest, he taught us how to serve one another in love with the ritual of table fellowship enjoyed by Christians of all times and places. So in remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves with thanksgiving as a living sacrifice. In union with Christ's offering for us, we live out the mystery of faith we proclaim. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Spirit of the living God, make us one as we partake of these gifts to us, so we might be in communion with you and one another. 
As we break bread together, may our eyes be open to see your glory. As we lift the cup of salvation, may we be strengthened to follow your way. Until Christ comes in final victory and we feast together with all the saints at God's great family reunion, keep your church one in service to the world here and now, even as we pray for the world you so love. Speak your peace in the world where wars rage and violence triumphs. We lift before you our prayer for the health of all nations, that all people may flourish, for the upcoming elections for our country, for all people in positions of power over other people's lives. May your will be done. May your kingdom come. May we, we pray for those who grieve, for those who are sick, for those who are struggling to live the fullness of your resurrection. Send forth comfort as only you can give. Forgive our sin, O Lord, as we forgive others. And remember our making. Work with who we are, where we are, to form these clay pots into vessels of living praise, that our lives may participate in the same unending song of the universe raised by all saints. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor and praise are yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and said, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for all for the forgiveness of sin. All of you, drink of it. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, crying out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb. And all angels stood around the throne and round the elders and the four living creatures and they fell on their face before the throne and worshiped god saying blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our god forever and ever amen since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses let us throw off everything that hinders us and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us with our eyes fixed on Christ. And may God's face shine with delight in looking upon you with favor and may you rest in God's peace forever. Amen.